and uh, first of all, a warm welcome to all of you. We have a quite big group here of uh, students from all over the world. So that's very interesting that you all have found us in this little part of the world in, let's say, Vlissingen. Um, maybe it's good to discuss some rules for this webinar. Um, to, to make the connection very lean and mean, it's good to mute your microphone. Uh, but you're always free to ask questions in between. And we have also some stop slides. Uh, at, at that moment, you can ask your questions and, and we would like you to uh, ask your question uh, via microphone, but you also have the possibility to write your questions in the chat. Um, we like to see you, however, for uh, reasons of conne a good connection, it, it is better to disconnect your camera. And maybe some of you will even feel comfortable with that. Um, and then we have the chat. Uh, we try to answer all your questions in the chat, but sometimes we also, if it's a very, if it's a question uh, that's relevant for all of you, we can also uh, answer your question um, uh, via the. Uh, yeah, via the microphone. So, well, welcome. Let's uh, let's start with the presentation. Um, first, an introduction of us. We are with Laura Yetison. She is a student, uh, third year student of the chemistry program. Is that right, Laura? Um, I'm actually second year, sir. Second year. Yes. OK, that's great. Um, Sarah, she will join us at the end of the presentation. She is an alumna from chemistry, and she will also tell something about her background and experiences with HZ. As it is also the case for Vanessa Arantes, she's also a chemistry alumna. And uh, well, let's start with introduce uh, myself. I'm uh, Geert Mo, I'm program manager working for uh, five, five years at the moment. Um, but now having my most incredible year of all time, I, I've been working for the HZ, as you can imagine. And but it's all, for everybody of us, it is, it is an incredible year. Um, um, well, Maybe Laura, you can introduce yourself. Um, yes. So hi everyone and the world welcome to the webinar dedicated to the chemistry program here at HZ. Uh, my name is Laura. I'm a second year chemistry student and I'm originally from Republic of Moldova. And all in all, it's a pleasure to be here and we hope to answer all of your questions during this webinar. Thank you, Laura. Uh, I almost forgot Mr. van der Berge. He's a lecturer from, uh, from the HZ. Maybe you can introduce yourself, Marcel. Yeah, hello, that's me. Uh, <laughs> you can see me. Uh, by the way, I'm a bit older than my boss, but uh, you can see that I have gray hair. <laughs> um, yeah, very welcome uh, also. And um, I will uh, read the chat messages, so uh, I will collect the questions. Uh, so uh, I will monitor that and, and maybe there are problems now, then I can uh, interrupt maybe. So um, yeah, I I'm, I'm, uh, will be your practical teacher uh, when, when you start uh, our our chemistry program uh, in the first two years mainly. So uh, yeah, I hope to see you uh, back. That's my introduction. <laughs> OK, thank you, Marcel. So I now, I now want to ask uh, Laura to uh, uh, pre present uh, 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 all the information we want to share with, uh, with you. Um, there are two parts. After the first part, there is there was a, a stopping slide at that moment, you can also ask questions by chat or we can answer questions from the chat, uh, but you're also free to ask your questions via microphone. So, well, uh, enjoy us in the Netherlands. OK, so without further ado, guys, let's get started. Um, I like first to start, to start maybe a little bit offset, not directly related to chemistry, but with something equally as important, and that's by introducing the two cities where you get to study and live 
when it comes to studying HZ. And those two cities are placing in the Middleburg. Uh, they are located in Zealand, the southwest of the Netherlands, with Middleburg actually being the capital of this, uh, being the capital of this region. Both of them are touristic towns with about 50,000 inhabitants. And most important, uh, Flissingen, besides being a tourist town, is also a coastal town. And that means that no matter where you are in Flissingen, be it at Hazed or in any other part, the other part of the town, you're always five to 10 minutes away from the beach. And if you bike, you, even, you can even make it there faster. And from my own experience, I have to say that you should never underestimate the power of living by the beach. Uh, let's say you're stressed because your exam sessions are coming up. You can just go and take a walk by the beach. And if you're happy because you're done with your exams, you can also take a, take a walk by the beach. So indeed, that's one of the greatest advantages. It's important to mention that the chemistry program is actually situate, uh, it actually takes place here in Flissingen. So most chemistry students live and spend most of their time in Flissingen. But do not worry, because Flissingen and Middleburg, they're very close. Uh, I, I believe that by bike, it's about 30 minutes, but you can even catch the train, catch the bus and make it there even faster. Uh, yes. So I've already said that one of the greatest advantages of coming here at HZ is living by the beach. But besides that, uh, studying at HZ and the chemistry program at HZ has many other advantages and opportunities. And among them are the personal approach, the broad international community, the pleasant atmosphere, and maybe the most important thing is the high quality, the high quality of the study programs offered by the university. And among them, of course, the chemistry program. To exemplify that, I would, like, uh, I would like to say that by doing this program, you get up-to-date learning material. And I have a personal, maybe not so funny, but funny story. I remember last year when I was still in my first semester, I had a friend who was a fourth year student from the same country as me. So naturally being a little bit anxious about uh, the level we were going to perform, I asked her about the experiment and how was it for her. And she told me, Laura, I haven't done that. I have to inform myself because we didn't do that in my first year. And to me, that just came to exemplify and show me that actually the chemistry program is changing. And what the lecturers are trying to do is give you actually up-to-date learning material. Theory and practice, they are always innovative and they are always according to the latest trends. And they are just there to come together and prepare you for a career in the chemistry field. Uh, besides that, another great advantage is the personal approach and direct contact with the lecturers. And I'd say that that's one of the greatest things and greatest advantages for me personally. I like the fact that here you're not just a number and the teacher actually know you and you know the teachers. And if you have any questions, let it be regarding to the topic you've just learned or maybe something else uh, to get in contact with them is just as easy as writing a message and getting a, maybe an answer ASAP or popping up by their office during their office hours and just ask your question and you're going to be welcome with an answer. As I said, you have a very, here at HZ, you get to develop a very international social network. And that's not just from the international community of your fellow students and from the teachers, but also from the professionals within the field you meet during your company visits and lectures. Um, for instance, in my first year with my study group, we actually went to Germany to visit a, a fertilizer company called Compo, and we got to work to walk around, see their production site, and then we got to visit the laboratory and see the test they perform in order to ensure that all the products are high quality. Uh, besides that, with the whole year, we went to Zealand Refinery during one of our blocks, and what we got to, we actually got to see around, uh, learn a little bit about the structure of the refinery, and then we even have a get, had a guest lecture, and they talked to us a little bit about the issues they are facing at the moment. In the, bio, in the refinery industry. Besides company visit, I'd say that at HZ you get a multitude of uh, guest lectures. And even nowadays, even one day ago, we had a guest lecture from someone uh, from which, um, during last semester, the, at the end of last semester, we during our NMR course, we had someone from Dow coming in and explaining, um, explaining us how their how they are using the NMR technique uh, at Dow. And for those who are more interested in biology and maybe biochemistry, uh, do not worry. We also have guest visits from people who work in that field. Uh, what was great about that is that we even had uh, the guest lecturer was a chemistry alumni from here from Hazed working at Erasmus MC. And now he's doing his PhD. So he came in uh, during our biochemistry class to tell us about the research he's doing. So to tie it in and to mention one more, the last but not the least, at least one of the main advantages of the chemistry program here 
care for me is the fact that you get to specialize in either applied chemistry or life sciences. Actually, one of the reasons I chose to do the chemistry chemistry program at AZ, because in the first year um, I got to do a comprehensive education, which would comply both fields. And um, at the end, when I would already know what fits me better, what I like to do in the future, I would be able to specialize. Okay, so um, I'm sorry for the mistake, but as you, I mean, you're already here, so you already know that chemistry is, we use chemistry in our day-to-day -day life and chemistry is all around us, starting from surgical materials, beauty and makeup, insulin yeast, uh, pharmaceutical drugs, forensic science and textiles, we always use chemistry. And that just comes to show you that no matter what, what you do, if you specialize in applied chemistry, life sciences, by the end of your career, there are multiple career, by the end of your study program, I'm sorry, there are multiple career options you can choose. As you can see, you can work as a research technician, a sales consultant, manager, lecturer, and for instance, I know there are people who like to go far for their education, that's also possible. And the fact that we have, for me, that's something that I would like to do. So the fact um, the fact that I could see someone, a chemistry graduate from Hazed, coming to tell us about the research he's doing on a PhD level, well, for me it was just an example that it's possible. You don't if you don't if going on with maybe a master's degree is what you want to do after your studies here at AZ, that's totally possible. If you like to go and enroll into the work field, that's also possible. And what you see on the slide are just a few options that you can you get while when choosing your career. Okay, so coming back to the advantages, as I already said, uh, what the greatest advantage is that this study program that get, gives you, I think, is the specialization. And I think I think that this specialization is what makes this particular study program stand apart from other similar study programs offered at other institutions here in the Netherlands and even, uh, even abroad. So as I already mentioned, the specialization is chosen in the third year and you get to choose between life sciences and applied chemistry. For instance, if you go for applied chemistry, you're going to learn more about polymer chemistry, circular chemistry, separation techniques, and how they are used in research and analysis. And you're also going to tackle environmental problems and conduct literature research and conduct actual research in order to come up with tangible solutions. And that's even greater because when it comes to this, when it comes to this topic, you get to work in close relationship with the research group here at the university, which we're going to tell you a little bit more about farther on. The other specialization is life sciences, and if you get to, if you choose life sciences, you get to delve a little bit more into subjects such as bacteriology, immunology, virology. Uh, you learn about fluorescent imaging techniques, application of DNA techniques used to identify microorganisms. You learn about the development of new vaccines uh, in relation to, immun for instance, immunobiology. And those are uh, those are especially interesting and intriguing techniques, and you can see their application in real life basis, uh, especially even nowadays. So yeah, I guess that was the first part. And this is the stuff Mr. Mo was talking about at the beginning. So I cannot see the chat, so I don't know if there are any, other, if there are any questions over there. Yeah, there is, we saw a question about um, how much lectures per day, for instance. Uh, well, the, we have two or three lectures, and each lecture is around 90 minutes. It's already answered in the in, in the in the chat. Um, uh, however, if we have the the practical uh, lessons, uh, we have a lot of practical lessons. It's about 40 percent of of the total lecturing uh, time is is, is practicals. Uh, most of the time, you will have uh, half a day practical, for instance, for applied chemistry, and half a day practical for uh, for life science. So um, that's also a, a big part of the, of the of the lesson. So you learn a lot of practical things. Yeah, um, and if I can add to what you've just said, sir, is the fact that uh, what I found is that like the theory you, you get, they really tie in with the practice. Uh, I mean, that was especially seen in the first year because, as you said, we'd have probably uh, theory classes two days per week, the first two days, and then first days and Fridays were for labs. And what you'd learn in the microbiology class, you'd go and put it into practice in lab. And the same would go for the, chemi for the um, chemistry related labs. Yeah. So that's another great advantage. And one good thing to know is that labs, they increase in difficulty. So you can you can actually see your progress because you see changing from the first year to the second year. 
Okay. Hey, Laura, can you maybe also tell something about the amount of homework and and um, and and the way that teachers grade your tests? Mm, the amount of homework, I uh, to be honest, in chemistry, I feel like we never really got homework. Typical ho typical things, typical tasks you deem as homework, like writing an essay or solving some problems and then sending them in for the next day. It's most likely keeping up with your studies and revising your notes. Um, and when it comes to tests, um, I was surprised by the grading system in the Netherlands because it starts at 5.5. So the 5.5 5 .5 is, is the lowest grade that you can, is the lowest passing grade that you can get. And then you just go farther on. But otherwise, the grading system is not different uh, compared to what I've seen in back home, for instance. So I think that might be the case for you as well. Yeah. Um, and we grade just by reviewing, uh, for instance, your, your tests or <clears throat> uh, your lab journal. That's also a way of grading. Yeah. Uh, um, so that, that's the way we, we look at your, uh, all the work done. And some, sometimes it's very practical that we also have a check uh, on how you're doing your practicals. Sometimes it's just reviewing your your uh, your tests. But you all, always have the ability to to see your own work uh, and also to see how we have reviewed your work. There is a special moment uh, for, for that in the timetable. Yeah. Uh, there is a question about adjusting the timetable. Well, you're not free to adjust your timetable yourself, but you can ask, uh, for instance, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Van den Berg is uh, involved in that. Um, you can ask him whether he has the ability to, to change lessons sometimes for, for reasons of a better schedule or easier scheduling. Uh, and so you have the possibility for that, but you cannot adjust the timetable yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, well, I, I do not see any more questions at this moment, so maybe we can continue on the second part of the uh, of the presentation. But you you can still ask your questions in the in the chat. You're welcome. We have twenty students now, so that's great. Okay, it's good to hear. It's good to hear. Be with us, guys. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the presentation. Okay, then I'll just move on to the next slide. Great. So after the small pause, just to tie into what, what, what was said previously, why should you study applied chemistry and life sciences? And um, this is personal point of view, but I believe that by doing the by doing the program, you actually get prepared to become a professional in the field. At least that's what like that's what it feels like to me. And by being a professional in the field, I mean that you are ready to tackle one of the greatest issues that we are dealing with right now with the society. And for instance, among them being waste problems, world food problem, pests and diseases, quality control and crime scene investigations, because that's also a, that's also very a real thing which has been here for many years and is going to continue being here. Um, related to these problems, we've, deal, we've dealt and delved a little bit into them during our study during our during our study. So. After finishing this pro after finishing the degree, it's clear that with the previous experience, you are just ready to come up with innovative ideas that, in my opinion, can be experimented and then hopefully they turn out to be great solutions that are useful to everyone else. Because in a way, uh, at least that's how I view chemistry. I feel like you're here to come up with solutions to help every to help the whole world. So this is the study structure of this program, which helps us come up with solutions to help the entire world. As you can see uh, at the beginning, the first four, uh, I say separations, uh, what, you, what you see there are names of different blocks, because here the study year is divided into four blocks. So the first in the first two uh, rows, you see the four blocks of the first year, and in row three and four, you see the four blocks of the second year. And then comes the, spe come the specialization, uh, the minor, and the internship. Uh, the, our first block, our first study, yeah, first block in the first study, in our first study year, was dedicated to food chemistry and chemistry of beer. Ma beer making was the biggest project that we've done. Um, I remember we went to actual brewery in a neighboring city. We got to see how brew how beer is made, and then we took notes. We even had a workshop at HZ, and then we made and brewed our own beer. It was exciting indeed, 
it was a roller coaster, more of like a learning curve. Uh, but the interesting part besides making your own beer was actually bottling it up, making a label and then presenting it in front of everyone else. I remember that the whole chemistry department came to came to taste it. And if I'm not wrong, uh, the teacher said afterwards that our beer was quite OK. And the most important, uh, I guess the cherry on top, the most important thing was the fact that actually a winner was chosen. It wasn't my team, unfortunately. Uh, our beer was OK, uh, low on the alcohol quantity, but I guess OK. <laughs> but the actual winners, they got to go back to the beer, uh, to the brewery and they brewed their own beer with the uh, with the person working there. Then we did some pool chemistry, which was most likely an introduction into some techniques, some important techniques in chemistry like titration. Then we did biorefinery. Uh, that's when we actually went to Zealand refinery and uh, we got to walk around and see the sites and learn more about um, the oil and refinery industry. And then we delved more into chemistry and health, which is maybe more very, which is of course very interesting for those who are, who, who are fond of the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, it is in this block we actually got to we actually got to do our own. I think it was aspirin. Uh, it was I think this block that we got to do a project, a really cool project. I still remember it was called DBA, and it was a take on a different type of sunscreen, which did not have uh, like heavy metals. And then we went that that's what we did in our organic chemistry lab. And then we went into our bio, biology lab and we actually tested it and saw how our DBA influ influences bacteria when you put them under UV light. So everything, as I've already mentioned, everything you do here is interconnected. And uh, in the first two years, you actually get a very full and comprehensive education. And everything you do is little bit, bits and bobs from both life sciences and applied chemistry. So it feels like you are getting prepared for the, the major choice you have to do in your third year. Um, to continue, as you can see over there, there are the other blocks in, the, in our second year. We started with bioorganic toolbox and actually right now we're doing marine bio-based specialties. And I've already mentioned that uh, here at AZ they have a research group. For instance, this block called Mar marine bio-based specialties is in strong relationship with the research group of the university. Uh, the blog beer is the name of the research group, and what we are doing um, is we're trying, we're learning more about algae, about the properties of algae, and about and everything that we are studying, like separation techniques and our biochemistry classes. They are tied in uh, with that. Um, if I had to put forward something really interesting from what they are doing in the marine bio-based specialties research group. Uh, we had a lecture like a few days ago from one of the researchers over there and he told us a little bit about the project that he's done and mainly about extracting a compound from brown uh, from brown seaweeds called, uh, called sterols and sterols they are known to have a good effect a good health effect a good effect on our health by lowering by lowering our cholesterol levels and what i found even more interesting was the fact that it had it was supposed to be have an effect on alzheimer and here came uh here came in us ourselves the students they told us little bits about little bits and bobs of the information they used for this we had no idea about the actual experiment but we had to come up with our own experimental design our own experiment setup and uh, although this sounds quite easy it actually ties in a lot of other stuff a chemistry student has to master so by doing that we actually learned also how to do some literature research and we how to skim and get the, the information you're looking for from a pool of information you can find online so yeah so this is the first part of the two years you're going to do here as i said you get courses from both applied chemistry and life sciences classes such as biochemistry separation techniques um, inorganic chemistry, organic chemistry, and they all prepare you for what you have to choose in your third year, and that's your specialization. Uh, you can choose from life sciences and applied chemistry, as exemplified previous, uh, previous to this slide, and you do your specialization in the first part, in the first semester of your third year here at HZ, and then you have one year and a half to dedicate to your minor and to go into the work field, getting hands-on experience and preparing you, preparing for the, I guess, for the adult life of a chemistry specialist. Um, another advantage of the chemistry program, which I think it's worth being noticed, is the fact that you can do your minor in the second half of your third year, of uh, your third year, but you can also interchange it with your internship. 
let's say you would like first to work a little bit and make sure you make sure you know what you're actually interested in let's you go and work and uh, you go and do an internship and then you can go for a minor and when it comes to minor you also have a pool of possibilities um, the, I know that I have friends in my year who are going to do a um, theoretical minor uh, at their partner university of HZ and I know that they are going to all countries of the world. Some of them are going to South Korea, others are staying here in Netherlands, some are going to, I think, Czech Republic, Denmark, Japan, so you name it and you can go there. And some of them are deciding to stay even here at HZ because that's also an opportunity. And here to tell you about that uh, by introducing Vorley, the Marine Bio-Based Specialties Research Group of the University. I I've already told you that they deal with extracting compounds from algae and seaweed, Zealand being a coastal region, and trying to see how you can implement those and how, er how everything they, uh, they do can be used to come up with solutions for problems we're dealing with nowadays. And um, because usually students who study HZ, they get fond of the university, they get fond of the place, the students, uh, the lecturers, some of them even decide to stay here for their minor internship. And that's a possibility because, especially because of this group. So during the Marine Biobase blog that we're doing right now, what they've been telling, they've introduced a little bit of the project that students are, are doing at the moment. So for instance, um, they told us that some students, some minor students from the third year, they're working on improving the taste of beer with compounds extracted from algae. So you're going back to what you did in the first year. And I mean, who wouldn't like to brew beer for their minor project? I think it sounds very interesting. <laughs> Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, that's what it, that's what I know about the product, the project. But I know for sure that you can stay here. You can choose what you like to work on, and you get freedom. You learn how to do stuff, and most important, you're just improving your knowledge and improving your, let's say, area of expertise when it comes to chemistry. Regarding internships, as I said, you can do it at HZ, but you can also go to other, new, to other places abroad, or you can even stay here in the Netherlands. With the pictures on the screen, you can see some of the places where our graduates and current students have done their internships, starting from Unilever and finishing with Erasmus of C. Uh, we all, the chemistry, HZ, the HZ chemistry alumni, some of them are all even working there at the moment. And you can also see exemplified some of the topics they've worked on. So for instance, life sciences related, we had people who did DNA extraction with civil spores in instant soup. Some of them worked on vaccine, um, uh, on the improvement and development of vaccines. And uh, let's say if you're interested in applied chemistry, you can see that uh, we had some people who worked on the derivatization and sepal preparation technique, technique for improved HPLC and mass detection. So big companies and very interesting, very interesting actually research topics for their internships. Which just comes to, okay, I remember, which, just, uh, which in my opinion just comes to show you that you are actually prepared to take on real problems uh, once you go out there and find an internship. Um, I remember that uh, the girl, I already told you about my friend who's a four, who was a fourth year student and now she's a graduate. And she was telling me that when she went for her internship and she did it, uh, yeah, she did it here at HZ, they already treated her as an equal and they treated her as a specialist because they knew that she had the knowledge and expertise to come up with solutions and to, to tackle whatever problem was being handed to her. Part, the study abroad part. Uh, so you can see just dots around the map where our people have gone to, but I can vouch for that. It has many other partner universities and you can choose from an amalgam here in Europe and some even in the States um, and part, like world parts of Asia, as I've already said, Japan and South Korea. And if you look at the pictures, you can see people having fun in different, in different areas of the world. So if that's what you're looking for, maybe doing a theoretical minor at one of uh, the partner universities, you can do that. It's up to you. And maybe even more important to mention is the fact that you, you would like to, to stay in the Netherlands and do a theoretical minor here in the Netherlands. It's also possible. Maybe that it comes even in handy for people who, who would like to further their career, go on with their studies straight after they're done with the bachelor degree here at HZ and they would like to continue here in the Netherlands. Um, I know that some of the universities might require pre-master, but if you do this 
uh, you do a pre you do a pre master course in this mine during your minor period, you can just go on to um, with the master course straight after you're done graduating at HN. Okay, that was too far. I was expecting more pictures. I'm sorry for that. Uh, but okay, I'd like to introduce to you uh, an amazing opportunity you have once you're once you are a chemistry student at HZ. As you can see in the the girl with the blonde hair and the smaller pig, that's me. And I'm surrounded by two of my friends and colleagues who are also part of this program with me. And in the bigger in the group uh, in the group picture, there are two more. There are actually two more students from my year who are also part of this program. And to formally introduce it, it's called ASCP, which stands for the Analytical Sciences Talent Program. It's a nationwide uh, science program here in the Netherlands, which focuses on uh, improving, your, improving the knowledge of students in regards to analytical chemistry. It's about uh, getting extra experience, getting extra knowledge in on some very interesting topics. For instance, so far we had, we had topics on MS, we've talked a little bit about NMR, um, what else? GC, HPLC, and you get those these lectures that you get. They're from top experts in the field, uh, in the field of academia, and people working in the in, in the industry. When it came to our NMR course, we even went to an, the NMR laboratory from Radboud University, and we actually got to see how everything works. And most important to mention that this actually this program is only offered for students um, who are doing. A, who are students at applied at applied um, at the applied universities? So it's for you if you come in the first if you come here at HZ in the first year and you find that you really like chemistry and you have an affinity for analytical chemistry and not only you can just sign up. Uh, it's a selection. It's a selection you have to go through. You sign up at the end of your first year and then if you're selected, you go on and just delve into this experience. Go on, take these extra classes and just just it helps you just improve and become even better um, it also has really good company network company network opportunities and besides that you also get a scholarship you got a scholarship throughout the whole program the program as i said the program uh, starts in the second year of your studies at hz and you're going to finish it at the at the end of your fourth year study and you get an extra certificate upon completion to show that you've been part of the program and i believe that it comes in handy when you're when you try to find a work afterwards a, a workplace afterwards yeah, I think that was it for what I had to say in regards to all of this. And um, here you can see that if you have any questions, you can go on the um, on the website on this blue on this orange circle called hz.nl slash chat. And by choosing chemistry, you're going to see a lot of at least a big list of chemistry a student ambassador from following chemistry. If you'd like to connect with any of us, if you'd like to connect with me, just press on my name and send me a message. Um, I'm more than happy to help you and I hope to be useful to you. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. We are more than happy to have you here. Thank you, so. sir. <laughs> uh, I've seen this, a few questions coming up in the chat. One of the questions is, um, uh, well, you can choose for uh, uh, two specializations. One is uh, the life science, the other one is the applied chemistry. And the question is, uh, uh, can I also choose the other one if I'm not satisfied? Well, that is possible, but you have to take into account that for each specialization, you have a package of courses. So if you want to change your choice, you have to, to do another package of, uh, of courses. So that, that is uh, some extra work to do. So it is possible, but it's also a little bit of a challenge and it, it will at least cost you some study time. So that's, it's important to take that into uh, to account. Um, Laura, maybe you yes. can tell something about the, the balance between group tasks and individual tasks. OK, um, I would say you have more like 50-50 when it comes to that. When you come here, uh, even in from straight on from the from the first week, you're going to be uh, you're going to be part of a study group. People you're going to work with and who you're going to especially work with uh, during your laboratory work. Um, 
we had group projects, mainly presentations before big events. For instance, the when we when it came to beer brewing, it was a group project of ours. The pre presenting it afterwards, it was also a group project. But we also have individual tasks like uh, separate homework uh, for some classes. That's what you do on your mainly. That's what mainly you do on yourself. But yeah, if I had to give a rough estimation, I'd say it's quite a nice balance, 50-50. Yeah. Uh, Laura, you you still have not been abroad, uh, not at a, a foreign university. There is a question about the tuition fee for the for the foreign university. I'm I'm not completely sure ab about that. Maybe Florence, she's from international office. Maybe Florence can answer that question. I'm not sure. She's she's also in this call. Yes. Uh, hello. Um, if you decide to go uh, abroad for minor, um, you keep paying your tuition fees with Hajet and there is no additional uh, tuition fees uh, when you go abroad to a partner university. So the tuition fees will be paid at Hajet. Okay. So, but also, you always have to, into, to take into account that you have some extra costs if you go abroad. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, you have to pay a little bit more for some fun. So yeah, but you can also apply for um, for let's say a kind of um, a scholarship, let's say the Erasmus uh, uh, scholarship. So it's not much, but yeah, it's it's something. <laughs> yeah. Another question is uh, about uh, studying with uh, continuing on, on a study for, for a master. Uh, and the question is also, however, can we do a PhD afterwards? If you continue to study for a master, for instance, at, at an, another university in the Netherlands, there is always the possibility to apply for a PhD position after you have finished your uh, master. However, some of the students uh, manage to do even a PhD with just a bachelor, um, uh, without a, just a bachelor diploma. So that's also a possibility, but that is somehow more challenging than if you have done, done a master study. Oh, but sir? it is still a possibility. Oh. Yes, Laura, you're welcome. I, I just wanted to add up what you're saying. Um, I've already said that we had in our biochemistry class, we had the chemistry graduate from, from here from Hazet, who came and told us a little bit about the research he's doing at Erasmus MC. And he told us that that's, that's, what, that's exactly his case. He only finished his studies here, then he went on, worked a little bit, and then found this postdoctoral position with uh, with Erasmus MC. He's, he did indeed say that there is a lot of implications that go with oh, when you start a PhD without a master, but that's possible. So we have chemistry graduates from Hazet who's, who are doing that. Yeah. Um, and even we do have a teacher that follow that that route. She also has a, a Bachelor of Science and after that she did a PhD. So it's, it's indeed a possibility in the Netherlands. And you're welcome to do that. Maybe additional on that, uh, it is possible if you do a pre-master to uh, to easily enroll in in a, in a, in a master program, uh, which means makes the master program even more, uh, yeah, somehow shortened. So that's also a possibility. Uh, you can do that instead of, a, for instance, an, a research minor. You can follow a pre-master program at. Uh, uh, for for instance, Wageningen University or uh, Groningen, whatever you uh, want, and there are uh, uh, specific programs for that. Um, could you say a little bit more about minor? That is somehow related to my answer that I just gave. Um, a, a minor minor is a sort of free period in which you can choose very different uh, topics. You can do, for instance, um, uh, a minor in philosophy. You can do a research minor. You can do a pre-master. You can do an educa educational minor. So you have a free choice for a period of half a year to fill in your own study at any other uh, educational organization, at the, any other school. Uh, we will have a check on, on, on your topic and on the courses you, you follow because it should not overlap with the current uh, program from chemistry. 
Have you already chosen a minor, uh, Laura? Um, not yet, but mainly because I'm part of the of the ASTP program that I've mentioned briefly about the previous to that. And when you're part of ASTP, you get the chance of doing a research minor uh, with one of the com partner companies of ASTP. And they're indeed big companies in the chemical industry like Shell, Dow, uh, Corbion. So I'm looking forward to doing a research minor with them. OK, great. Yes. Um, another question. If you have already done some other courses at the university, um, do you have to do them again? If there is a quite nice overlap, and in a lot of cases it is the case, if you have a nice overlap with courses of the HZ, we can have a, 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 we, we can look in more detail on, on, on those courses and see whether we can find an exemption for those courses so you, that you don't have to follow them again. Um, someone is laughing how you are giving this whole information, uh, Laura. I think that's about you. Uh, I hope it's a good thing. I hope it's a good thing. You learn a lot in two years being at being here. And um, I'm also part of the student ambassador team. And I've been present at different, like at previous open days. So as I said, you learn a lot. So <laughs> I guess I like they, will, it, so. they will find you again on the Hasset chat. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. <laughs> um, I would ask Vanessa and Sarah whether they can tell something about their experiences on on the on the HZ and how they found their have found their way in the, in the the landscape of research. Laura. Uh, yes. Is it possible to to to, to, uh, to connect? To, Camera on. Uh, my camera. Yes. Uh, Vanessa, we see you. Hi. Hello. Maybe uh, you, well, you can hello. tell something about um, how you experienced the asset, what you did yes, for your course. final thesis. Uh, of course, of course. Well, uh, I have to say that since the beginning, I felt very connected with Hasset. Uh, instantly, I met so many people. We had such a great time. I made friends for life. Uh, it was really an amazing experience. Uh, I really, really appreciate all my time in Hasset. I feel that I learned so much. And also with the opportunity uh, to uh, be in the ASTP, uh, I think... Yeah, that's the thing to do. Believe me, guys, go for the ASTP and do uh, the studies while you're doing that. Um, thanks to that, uh, to all the knowledge uh, I received uh, from both programs. First, I did my first internship in Corbion uh, with Sara. It went extremely well. Uh, they told us that uh, we were the best uh, interns they ever had. And since then, they just get ASTP students. Um, after that, uh, we went to the SM, uh, different locations. I went to the SM Helene, uh, Materials and Sciences, and I stayed there for a year. So I did my minor and my final thesis. Uh, yeah, I decided to do a research minor uh, because, uh, yeah, way more work experience. So right now, uh, Sarah and I were basically uh, the ones who have the most work experience in uh, our group in uh, these four years. And let me tell you that companies really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, just after we graduated, we got a job, so instantly started. And now we want to do our master's uh, here in uh, Maastricht University. Thanks. Maybe you will have some questions for uh, Vanessa? Yes, of course. Whatever you want to ask. Uh, oh, no Vanessa, can, can yeah. I ask a question? Um, I, could you, I mean, you've already said that you've been to two, inter, two internships at Corbion and DSM. I mean, could you please tell us maybe at what was one of the internships about? What did you do? Yes, of course. Uh, well, my first two internships, I did NMR. Um, it was method development. Actually, all, all my internships were method development. Um, it, that's quite a challenge for an intern that 
has really not much experience. Uh, but with the proper guidance, I think you can get there. Um, thanks to my second internship in DSM, uh, that was uh, regarding polymer analysis with NMR. Uh, I got to compete in the uh, in a coast event uh, that's part of the ASTP, where you have to present your project in five minutes, and uh, then you have a jury, a very important jury. So basically very uh, high bosses, let's say, from different companies, uh, again, Corbio and DSM, among others. Uh, and thanks to that project, I actually uh, got one of the, um, uh, the prizes, which uh, allowed me to present in a conference. So I was actually the first ba ungraduated bachelor student to present in the conference organized by uh, this company. So, yeah, uh, I would really recommend to do ASTP, ASTP projects because you go to the next step. It's a challenge. It's really difficult. But if you have the motivation and the willing, then it's the best, best thing you can do. OK, thank you for answering. Uh, I'm impressed. But first of all, congratulations to you. And thank seriously, you. I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions I may help with? Okay. Uh, Sarah, are you connected now? Yeah, uh, I'm here. I don't know if the sound is okay. The sound is okay. <laughs> yeah, so like Vanessa said, we did a lot of the same programs, worked in a lot of the same companies, um, but the difference is I specialized in life sciences. So I had, in essence, the best of both worlds. I had life sciences at the Hazard, and I also did ASTP, so I have a background in analytical chemistry as well. Um, I worked in Corbion on method development as well uh, for my first internship. Uh, my second internship was at DSM in Delft. So in the biotechnology part of DSM, uh, where I worked on method optimization. And my final internship was in the company where Vanessa and I both work right now. And it's a company that deals with biomedical imaging. Um, so my internship, uh, my final thesis internship was based on uh, mass spectrometry imaging and trying to determine biomarkers in here um, that we could use for diagnosis of cardiovascular diseases. And like Vanessa said, ASTP was just an amazing opportunity. And now thanks to that and all of the work experiences we had, uh, for me, it was also easier to apply for a master in biomedical sciences here in Maastricht. Uh, which hopefully I will be starting in September this year. Great. How did you experience the 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 HZ, the, the guidance, the support, the lessons? I think the guidance was the biggest part um, because I personally came to the HZ knowing about the two specializations, but also absolutely having no clue about which one should I go for. Uh, which one would be better for me, but because we had a lot of practicals and uh, theory lectures in both specializations, by the time um, we had to make a decision at the end of the second year, I knew what I wanted to do. And especially because Hazard is also part of ASTP, it made that decision a lot easier in the end. Thank you, Sarah. Do you have any questions for Sarah? You can also ask your questions by microphone. Feel free. No questions. Anything to share? So, so for this moment, I will thank uh, especially Laura, Vanessa and Sarah for their contribution to this uh, webinar, but also a special word of thanks for all uh, participants in this webinar. We are very glad we have had you here, um, but we are also very glad to welcome, welcome you uh, coming uh, year. Um, maybe it's good to inform you that uh, the the former date of enrollment, the deadline was the 1st of May, 
but uh, that has been extended to the 1st of June. You still have the possibility to enroll in the program. Um, so spread the good news that we have a lot of room yes. here. You're very welcome to come to the HZ and we definitely will provide you a very nice and warm welcome. Um, Florence. Yes, uh, for, not, for international students, the deadline is um, 1st of August for European students and 15th of June for the non-EU. But okay. still, the, the, the sooner the better. <laughs> the sooner the better, but if you uh, hesitate, you have some time, but still the possibility to come. So that was uh, uh, relevant uh, additional information, uh, Florent. Thank you. OK. Um, can, I well. just, can I just something, sir, before we're done? Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Um, I wanted to tell you because you've already said that the deadline has been extended. So for people who are still maybe wondering how it is like to study here, uh, we have a group on Facebook called HZ Prospective Students where you can get in contact with uh, our prospective students, maybe from the same country, doing the same, going to do the same program as you, and also with student ambassadors. Uh, you can also reach us on Instagram at hz.international. We are active there, posting really interesting content. And you can, and for more information, because I know some other webinars might be coming up, uh, you can you can go on the page written on the on on the screen, and you can maybe sign up if you're interested in. Okay, thank you, Laura. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, we will see you all again uh, coming uh, study year. And um, for now, uh, have a nice evening, but also have nice holidays that are coming up. And all keep healthy and safe, safe in this period. And uh, we wish you a very good time and see you in Vlissingen. Yes. Thanks. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.